three really important trends that I see in people who struggle to get a good score in the MSRA assessment. I'm Dr. Amin Arora. I've been helping doctors prepare for MSRA for many, many years now. I don't talk about three things that I see very, very often in people who struggle to get good scores and therefore get into training or specialty training of their choice. MSRA exam, of course, multi-specialty recruitment assessment is an assessment used now for many different specialty entry programs, whether it's GP training or radiology or psychiatry or anesthetics or ONG, for example. MSRA is a part of entry to those training programs in several different ways. The exam is the same for all specialties. And I see a lot of people therefore preparing and therefore struggling to get good scores. And it's really sad because MSRA is a very passable exam. It's not quite a pass or fail. You need to get a high score, but it's a very passable exam. But certain things pull people back. And this video is going to cover three really important things that I see very, very often. So number one are the two U's that I talk about, okay? People underestimate MS rate, number one, and number two, people have a lack of understanding of what actually MS rate is all about. So let's talk about underestimate first. MS rate is not an easy assessment, okay? It contains a lot of, well, it contains two main types of questions. You've got your clinical questions and you've got your SJT or professional dilemma questions. And when I talk about, and we've got videos on, on what these all are and how to prepare for these types of questions somewhere else on the channel. But the underestimation that happens from people when it comes to preparing this exam is often very big. People haven't done this type of assessment before. It is a tricky assessment. It takes a bit of work. It takes a lot of work, actually. It takes a lot of preparation, not just from the knowledge side, but the technique side as well for both different types of paper. And people can sometimes underestimate it. They're kind of, well, I've done lots of exams in the past. I've done, I don't know, medical school finals. I've passed PLAB. I've, I've done, you know, all these other kind of assessments already. I should be fine. This is just another one. Um, I'll be I'll be fine. I know how to do MCQ papers. It is different, okay. Um, the clinical paper is not just testing knowledge; it's testing application of knowledge. If you don't understand that, or if you underestimate it, you're going to struggle. When it comes to the SJT paper, you may not have done professional dilemma type questions before. They take a little bit of work and effort and understanding. So to underestimate this paper is a problem that will cause you issues when it comes to doing it and getting your results. And I see this too often and I, and I feel really bad because there's some really good doctors who don't get into training because they underestimate how much work, time, effort, sacrifice is needed to do well on MSRA. So if you're preparing for MSRA or starting to prepare, please don't underestimate it. Please don't think I'll do a couple of weeks work and I'll be fine. Please put the work in, make a plan. We can help you make a plan. We can help you train for it, but make sure you get in your mind that I need to put the effort in to get a good score. That's the first you underestimate. The second you is lack of understanding. They just don't really understand what this assessment is until it's too late. Okay, there are two types of paper. You've got to know what type of questions are coming. You've got to know what style of questions are coming. You've got to understand what is being assessed of you. There is a kind of um, a document produced all about the MSRA telling you what I need to know, which clinical coverage uh, topics I need to know, which kind of SJT things I need to understand. And people just don't understand what they do. So what they do is they do loads of questions, but because they don't really understand what is being looked at from the other side or how it's being assessed, they let themselves down when it comes to the real exam. So please don't, number one, please don't look at these, uh, don't follow the trend that I see of missing out these two U's. Don't underestimate how much time and effort and energy this paper is going to take in terms of getting a good score. And don't please not understand what the exam is assessment is all about. We've got blogs and videos that cover exactly what it is. So please do take the time to watch them and make sure you don't fall into that category. That's number one. The second trend that I see in people who struggle to get a good score in MSRA is they use a single preparation method. Now, what I mean by this, we, you may have heard about the dual preparation method that we talk about on one of our other MSRA videos on the channel. If you just go and do a single preparation method, i.e. do question after question after question after question, or do months of question bank, question bank, question bank, thinking, well, I'll just cover as many questions as I can from a clinical and an SJT point of view, and I'll be fine. And of course, some people are okay with that, and some people do really well just by doing questions, but we talk a lot about dual preparation approach. Number one, you've got to be regular problem solving. You've got to do questions, of course. You've got to start to understand the style of questions for both types of exam. That is important. But secondly, you've got to be building your knowledge base as well, both from a clinical point of view, but also from an SJT point of view as well. So from a clinical point of view, you've got to be going through current guidelines. You've got to have some kind of system involved to make sure you're checking off all the different 
curriculum titles that you need to get through cardiology, respiratory, gastro, etc., emergency medicine, um, investigations, diagnosis, treatment. These are all really important. We've got a video somewhere else about clinical and what you need to cover. But you can't just go and you can't just rely on question banks to cover all of that material. Okay, you have to have some system where you're doing a bit of background work and this dual preparation process is going in. Now, one good way to do this is to split your time equally. So if you have an hour or two hours or three hours that you're going to sit down, split it half off. Okay, half of that time should be doing questions because questions will give you that understanding of the question type, get used to problem solving, etc. You learn a lot that way. But spend the other half of that time frame building up your knowledge whether it's clinical knowledge like i said through going through guidelines we've got online courses we've got audiobook courses or just simply going through websites and trading through guidelines whatever you choose to do make sure you have a system to do that and from the sjt point of view as well it's not just about doing lots of questions you've got to understand and learn and build knowledge so for example reading gmc good medical practice guidance reading ethical guidance going through things that are going to help you problem solve when it comes around to doing those questions in the exam. So one of the commonest trends that I see in people who struggle to do well in MSRA is they just have a single track learning system, i.e. question after question after question after question and relying on question banks to cover all their ground. You can't do that. You need a dual preparation approach, knowledge on the one hand, problem solving on the other hand. If you combine the two, you really do maximize your chances of doing well for MSRA and we can help you on both sides if you need help with that. Now, the third trend that I see, and this is a really, really important one, is people often before they even do the assessment don't believe they're going to get a really good score. Now, this is this may sound, okay, this is not important and, and, and why is this key for me doing well? But your mindset, where you set yourself up, how high you aim to achieve is really important when it comes to MSRA. Now, when people, when you're going for MSRA, this is a competitive assessment, okay? It's not a pass or fail. It's about, okay, I need to get as high a score as I can to try and maximize the chance of me getting a training position both in the area or field that I want to go into, but also geography. Sometimes how well you do determines where in the UK you're going to end up. So it's really important to try and fight for every mark. Now, if you don't believe that you're going to do well from the beginning, then you're already on a downer because you may not put that extra 10% of time in. You may not push yourself when you get to that bit where I can't be bothered and should I do a little bit of extra work. If you already believe you're not going to do well, then these things are all going to pile up and you're going to struggle when it comes down to the assessment because you just haven't put the time and the effort and the energy in. There are going to be times where you think, oh, you know what, I, I'll leave it today or I'll just, I can't be bothered today. Let's have an off day. Of course, once in a while, that's fine. But if your belief system is low already, you don't believe that you're going to get a high score and therefore going to get the job that you want in the area that you want, it is going to impact your performance. And when I see people prepare for MSRA and I see a lot of doctors preparing for MSRA, going for all different specialties, I see the ones that really believe that they're going to do really well. It's not just the belief that makes them do well, but that belief gets them to push the extra mile. That belief gets them to think about how can I boost my knowledge? That belief gets them to think about how do I improve my technique? That belief gets them to, to work hard I don't want things like problem solving and learning from every question and maybe doing an extra five or 10, even when you want to put the laptop away and stop and, and stop doing reading or whatever it might be. Those people do much better in MSRA. And I can see that trend from the beginning when people contact me and they ask me about MSRA all the time. How should I prepare? What resources are the best ones to use? It's those people who clearly believe they're going to do well and therefore they're pushing and planning and making things more efficient do much, much better than those people who kind of contact me and say, you know what, I'm going to give it a go this time. I don't think I'll do very well. I want to kind of see what the assessment is like. I mean, if I don't do well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to go again next year. If that belief is not there, it really, really hinders you because it stops that little bit of a push that you need to be doing to try and maximize your preparation, to try and do the best that you can on that particular day. So you've got to start with that high point that you believe that you're going to go well, believe that every question is possible, believe that the, the job, the rotation, the position in the UK that you want to be is attainable. That will push you that extra 5 10% in preparation. And as long as your technique is good, as long as you've got a dual preparation technique and you're looking at both knowledge and problem solving, and as long as you understand the exam and don't underestimate it, that should lead you to getting a really, really good score when it comes to the MSRA exam itself. So to recap, three really important trends that I see that you do not want to be doing when it comes to MSRA to try and maximize your chance of getting a good score. Number one, don't underestimate the exam and don't not understand the exam. Okay, the two U's. Number two, don't have a single preparation method. Make sure you go in a dual preparation method in terms of your plan. And number three, make sure you believe that you're going to get a good score because that will push you that little extra 5 10% that can make all the difference. Now, I'm Dr. Amin Aurora. I've been training, like I said, doctors for MSRA for many, many years. If you want 
any help in terms of resources, please do use the coupon Aurora Video 10, A R O R A V I D E O 1 0 for help on any of our MSRA resources. Our online course, our audiobook courses, our MSRA mock exams, our MSRA flashcards, live courses, whatever it is that you think might benefit you most, please get that 10% discount off on the website, auroramedicaleducation.co.uk slash MSRA. If you need any further support, advice, help, anything to try and help you get these three areas right for your preparation, please don't hesitate to drop me a line, contact me, WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook, however you want to get in touch. I am available to try and help you maximize your MSRA score. But please, 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 please don't fall into the category of those people that I see not doing very well, falling into those three trends that I see very, very often each time MSRA comes about. I really, really hope this video has been of some value. You know, the hashtag campus will pass. Hashtag I went with Aurora. Have a good day.